Yes. Okay. And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the DS Podcast. Let's get into it. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for inviting me back. Uh, it's been always a pleasure and um, on the podcast and, and helping uh, digital nomads and uh, passport pros all over the world with, uh, with their questions. All right. And Mo, can you introduce, introduce yourself to the viewers out there in the world? Yeah, it's uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Abshanab. I'm uh, you can always call me Mo. I'm an international lawyer. Uh, I've uh, lived in the eight plus countries and I've visited the 25 plus and I've done business in more than 50 plus countries. And um, after the lockdown and the pandemic, I've shifted my business to be 100% online. I've run a multiply businesses. One of them is called Visca. It's a platform to help uh, entrepreneurs and uh, digital nomads uh, lower their taxes and get a residency and set up. Uh, citizenship in other countries and also i run a community called the uh, passport bros uh, it's uh, i call them the official passport bros we have a facebook group now more than uh, 3000 members and we host a, a, a youtube channel a, a podcast but we mainly focusing on how to building a global lifestyle and uh, how to play with the system in different countries yeah. Oh, nice. Wait, am I in that group for Facebook? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I, I invite you or no, but uh, I mean, it's you just type <laughs> Passport Bros and you will be there, yeah. All right. <laughs> it looks like I got to join that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So what made you actually come to Dubai and the UAE? I mean, I've been doing business in Dubai from 2003, so it's almost 20 years now. Um, I mean, Dubai is... Um, before it's being an international city, it's like Hong Kong or Singapore or New York or London. It used to be the center for the Middle East. When I used to live in the Middle East before, uh, to do anything in, in international business or opening uh, or doing um, uh, like uh, international bank accounts or registering company or even trying to meet anyone from the, if you, if you are if if you, I used to live in Egypt, so when we try to meet people from. Uh, from the UK or from the US or Singapore, we have to meet in Dubai because it's the easiest place. It's the connecting, it was connecting the Middle East. That was 20, 20 years ago. That's where the first time I, I visited, I understand about the rules, the regulation, the country itself, the culture. And actually I fell in love um, in, uh, Dubai actually is just a city, but the country itself is called the UE or the United Arab Emirates. We can give like uh, more information about the background and history of the country because there's n many misinformation available online about everyone think that Dubai is the country or actually it's not even it's not the capital. It's like what I can tell you, Dubai is like in New York to the UE, but they have Washington. They have Washington DC. It's called Abu Dhabi. So uh, Dubai is not the capital of the UE, but it's the second largest or the, the largest city, but it's not the capital. Um, it used to be the hub for the Middle East, but now it's like a global city. Mm. So how are the living conditions over there in Dubai? Is it really good, bad? I uh, for, for our uh, viewers from, from the U.S. or from U.S. and Canada in general, I can give you like um, Dubai is like um, New York in the 50s. Okay. You have extremely very developed high skyscrapers. Uh, you have a very, very well connected uh, airport. Uh, you can access mostly any place in the world uh, flying from Dubai. And the, and the country itself is full of expats. 95% who people live in Dubai actually not, not uh, uh, citizens or national of the country. They are expats wow. from other countries. And this is a very unique place that you'll not be able to see this kind of uh, expat issue anywhere in the world. Mm. Man, that's news to me. I never actually knew about that. 95% is all yes. expats? Yes. And it's, it, I can give you more details about this, how it's come to this um, um, statistics. It's... it's uh, the, the actual nationals of citizens of the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, they are very small, uh, you can say, minority compared to the large expats. Uh, the country itself was, uh, you can say, incorporated or started 
1972. And they imported uh, workers and doctors and lawyers and uh, from, from all over the world. They start by India, Pakistan, and Arab states, and also from the UK. Uh, and they, they built the country from the ground up. There was no country before 1972. So if you compare 1972, this is what the, you can say. Uh, uh, the, they even don't have like a constitution. They, they don't have anything. They, they build everything from the scratch. So they imported all the workers and expats to build the country. And this actually expats doesn't leave. They, most of them are still living there. But they have, they have like a, a certain rules. They will not be able to grant them a citizenship. There's, they don't have a way to grant expats in the country. Uh, very, very, you can say 0.0.0% have been granted a citizenship, but the 99% of the expats that live in the country still uh, live there as expats, whatever they are, Indians or Americans or British or whatever their, their backgrounds. That's why we have this uh, unique aspects of ratio between expats and locals. Mm, okay, yeah, that's definitely good. That's good information there. So, what's your actual thoughts on like the passport bros and like the future? I mean, of the, the passport bros. From from now, I mean, w once we have uh, our first uh, meeting together, like almost three three months ago, when I'm just starting the idea, I have more yeah. information now because we have more than three thousand people uh, join the the group, and we're sharing ideas and. Uh, that the idea itself is getting more momentum, but it's it's getting into, you can say, people are understanding that I can travel to other country for a better lifestyle, for uh, more opportunities, or even for dating. It's it's the idea started as that I don't I need to find better dating opportunities not in the U.S. in other countries, mainly East countries like uh, in. Uh, in, in Thailand and Philippines and in Africa and Latin America, that's where mostly people go. But nowadays, people, I mean, all the videos or all the information is focusing more in delivering how actually you can change your mindset and find better living opportunities, better, um, you can say, uh, economic opportunities. It's not just about dating, it's about having a different experience. And that's that's where that's that's the main of my uh, you can say my pass my my version of passport bros is different from the other passport bros because I'm trying to give as much of information where to go and how to plan your move to a different country. Yeah, that's actually the the right mindset. Usually, people just focus more so on just the the dating aspect instead of actually leveling up financially, uh, physically mentally it's got to be there as a man man it's become a better version of yourself so yeah I yes understand it, that. yeah it's 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 i mean building yourself as a man from whatever you have any problems before or you're not finding the right opportunities in your right home country people used to it's like the world was before like 100 years or 200 years there was no borders if you're fed up from your home, I can go to other place. And, and that's how the, the, the U.S. started, the United States started. People come from everywhere. They were escaping Europe. They were escaping the Middle East and Asia and Latin America. So that's how the U.S. started. That's the same idea now happening on the other way around. People fed up from, from, from you can say, political problems, economic problems, dating problems. And they find there is more opportunities in other places. So they try to, to, to go to different places. And they, they see that I have more opportunities there. We have in the group, I can give you like a couple of examples, uh, that people go to Cuba, people to go to uh, Brazil, people go mostly Latin America, not just Mexico. Mexico is very, very famous with the U.S. expats, but they are, uh, we have friends who say, I have a grandfather who from Colombia, I've never been there. I would like to go there and see how my grandfather was living there. And then he just go in, a, in like a field trip couple of weeks and then he come and tell us how he feel what kind of he, his mindsets change because actually the countries itself in the media it's not in the real ground when you go and visit the country like like i tell you the, I'm, I'm telling you um, not very well information about dubai or the united arab emirates 
you're not able to find or know this information once you go there and live for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. So you can understand the culture, the mentality, and what's, what's things in ground. That's, that's how the, 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 you can say the movement is taking shape to something different, yeah. Mm. So Mo, what do you actually think why do you think Dubai as a no tax country is suitable for passport bros? I mean, when you when you decide to leave your whole country, whatever the US or Canada or you or the UK, most of them are high tax countries. The first thing that come into your mind that I'm moving to a different location. Why I don't move to zero tax place or you can call them tax heaven. And Dubai is the easiest and fastest and most advanced uh, tax heaven uh, country in the world. It's not an island. It's not like Cayman Island. It's, it's not like Bermuda. Uh, it's not. It's it's actually a country. It's a country with four million residents. Uh, it have a different airports. It have a very good well infrastructure. So when you when when people think about tax heaven, they they come to mind the idea about I'm going to Caribbean place. There's no one there. I will be laying on the beach all the all the day, doing nothing. I just stack my cash into a bank, and I, I enjoy paying no taxes. This idea actually doesn't. doesn't uh, it's it's all it's only in 007 or James Bond movies, but actually in the ground, that th this is never happen again. You, you you're going to a new country, whatever it's tax haven or no, you will face the regulations, you face rules, you'll face obstacles. But once you understand the rules and regulation and the mentality. Your life will be much better. You will be able to enjoy um, reducing your tax. You know, as a U.S. citizen, you will need to stay keeping pay taxes, even if you are living in tax-free country that like the U.E. But you can get used to many uh, foreign exemptions. Uh, there is there if you married one of the one of the benefits of being passport bros. If you marry to a foreign citizen, she is not the U.S. You'll be able to claim more tax. Uh, outside uh, the U.S. if you are not living in the U.S. anymore. So you can you can claim like um, up to more than 100K as you are not living in the U.S. anymore and then claim more money as you are married to someone who is uh, non-U.S. citizen. That That's the thing. The second thing about Dubai that there is, as I mentioned, it's, it's a full of expats from different countries. So whatever your taste of dating, or whatever your taste of eating, or whatever your taste in, in life, you will find it there. If you are into the Indians, if you are into the uh, the Africans, the Latin Americans, uh, the Asians, you will you will find it. And also, if you, you when you visit a place for the first time, uh, in order to get over the homesickness, you'll find a lot of similar mindset. Like you'll find a lot of Americans. You'll find them with different backgrounds, races. Uh, you will find a lot of groups and communities that share whatever you think in life, you'll find it in Dubai. That's why it's a very unique place. Mm. Yeah, I'm actually thinking of actually just traveling to Dubai, definitely. <laughs> and actually setting up all my businesses over there. Yeah. So I'll definitely get <laughs> off the call with that about you. So, um, so Mo, can you actually explain like what tax optimization is and its relevance for passport pros in Dubai? Uh, I, I mean, Dubai has a very uh, straightforward process if you would like to re relocate there. And I, I will explain about the process itself, the benefits, and, and how you can do it. Let's start with example. I'm, I, I'm John, I'm an American citizen. I lived all life in the U.S. and I decided to move to the, uh, to the UAE, to Dubai. Okay, the first thing you need to do is just, my advice always, give it a visit at least two or three weeks. Before any investment, before signing anything, just visit the country. Okay, if, if, if this is your first visit to the country, my second advice, don't visit it between May and uh, September. Visit before May or after September, because it's this, this time of the year, the weather is extremely hot. I not be able to actually enjoy the the experience in this time. So before it's it's at the winter or early summer. That's 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 my second advice. Once you do the first trip, and you feel this is place, yeah, I would like to be there. I would like to set up myself there. 
then you start the next step. The next step is to, uh, they have something called free zone companies, or I can call them tax-free company, where you go to this um, service provider. I, I provide the service myself. You can go there. Uh, you don't have to go, go actually there, visit them, but you can do everything online. You open uh, the, the free zone company or the uh, tax-free company. Uh, you pay, they, they have a, a yearly license fees. And once the company is open, the minimum base to start is, is 10K. That's including only the company setup for per year and getting something called residence card. Residence card is your, it's not like a green card, but it's like your, your visa to stay in the country, your way to stay up on the country. You will get the company, you will get the residence card, and then you open a bank account. That's the three things minimum to set up yourself there. You can start as as uh, as low as 10k USD, but if you would like to have a premium, uh, you can say more complex. If you if you have multiply companies or you bring in your family with you, the price will go up to 15, 20, or 25, depending on what what kind of value added services or something you would like to add on on the long run. But the base, if you just go yourself and just one company, one bank account, is 10k per year. That's it. Um, Mo. Um... For the average person out there who has like, maybe they're wanting to actually set up multiple businesses, would they actually still have to pay the 10K? I, I mean, for all, for all of them? You don't have, I mean, if you're coming from a different country and you have someone like you already having the multiply businesses and they would like just to, to put, to start in Dubai, my first advice, just have one business. That will be enough for you because it it will be tax free. It will give you bank account, and you can do or start moving your um, businesses or services from from the US to, to to the UAE. If if you have a very complex setup, the 10K will not be enough. You need to have a proper setup. You need to have uh, you need to take you need to have a lot of advice and research before going there. But the simple setup, the simple you start in the 10K, and you just pay this today and will cover you for 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 one year okay it's it's not that uh, that you have to pay something monthly or anything no just this this is it's called license fee the the you got the the company and you have to renew the company each year okay so it's, it's best advice just to set up one company over there yeah. first and then start adding more companies after yes once you can just, yes once you because it's like it's this is advice I give for anyone who would like to go to other countries. When you visit a place for the first time, take some time to understand um, the culture, the mentality, the rules and regulations, and to it will take you at least six months to to have a process like uh, the bank account to process how much I need to pay, how much I, I need to uh, the fees I need to uh, to uh, to pay, how much is the living cost, um, how to get in and outside the country. Because each country have their own process. I mean, Dubai is very st straightforward, and they have a very the the dom have a rate a lot of red tapes, and everything could be done uh, whatever online or in minutes. But at least you need to get into this mentality, so you can get as much as benefits from it. Okay. So, what is it? What is it like exploring the challenges that? Passport pros may encounter during the relocation process. Uh, the, the the first thing you need to know, to know as, as as we discussed that if you if you are you can use Dubai as your global headquarter. If you if you for example if you would like to target countries like in Thailand and Philippines or in African countries, and they are not very well developed and they don't have the same you can say quality of life compared to the U.S. You can use your um, residency or company in Dubai as a headquarter to, to you can say, to as a base to travel to other places. That will be more uh, tax efficient and, and more, uh, you can say, more easy to set up. If you are looking to date in different countries at the same time, I know some, some people do this, so you can use Dubai as a headquarter. Yeah, it's, 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 it's feasible. I mean, yeah. once, you get, once you get out your mind about the... <laughs> happy wife, happy life, or whatever they call them. Yeah. It's like you, you, I mean, there is no, I mean, by the way, I mean, it's legal in Dubai to have multiply partners or wives. It's, it's an Islamic country. So it's, 
<laughs> they, they don't have a they don't have this uh, uh, rules about if you can have multiply partners. It's it's it, the this is this is the, you can say it's not just Islamic law, but this is the tradition for 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 many countries. And and once you get out and get out your mindset in in in, in different places and different cultures, you will be able to benefit from as much as having your headquarter in in Dubai. One more thing. Uh, because I, uh, I, I've seen this a lot. I have, for example, American citizen who uh, find a partner or, or, or um, in Philippines, but they don't. He don't like living there. He like this is my partner or my wife. It's it's it's, uh, it's very feminine. It's very good, and, uh, and I'm happy. But I don't want to go to back to the U.S. and I don't want to live in the Philippines. What's my options here? Stay in Dubai. So it's in the middle. The cost of living is more moderate compared to the U.S. And uh, your partner or wife will be able to visit her family in Philippines. And if you would like to do anything in the U.S., it would be much more. Mid. So it's like win-win situation. Okay. So you, you, I actually caught something there. You said um, the prices over there in Dubai is a lot more moderate than the U.S. Can you explain more about that? Y yes. It's uh, uh, the, the first thing I would like to mention. It's not cheap. It's not cheap country as, or you can say, not affordable countries, like in in certain African countries or in Thailand or Philippines or Indonesia. It's more. It's more on the expensive side, but it's not expensive as it's. It have skyscraper. It's have they have like a Manhattan, uh, extremely expensive like Burj Khalifa and all this, but also they have moderate prices. You can you can you can rent, uh, you can say condo, one uh, one flat uh, or one bedroom, with around it's like five thousand dirhams, which is around the dirham is like, uh, I, I I can give you the exact location, but you can live actually a moderate life with just two uh, k USD, moderate life, okay. Um, so 2K USD per month? Yes, per month. That's the moderate life. If you would like to leave Rujul, you can live as, as 1K, but this is, it's tense. It's not for everyone. If you if you would like to have a luxury life, there's no end. Dubai is like the, the ultra luxurious capital of the world. That's the thing. But the, but always remember, there is many, the, the, the income range in, in, in Dubai itself is very huge. Some people live in a very low, uh, income and peop and and there is moderate and there is extremely high, so whatever your your situation or affordability, you can live. But if you compare, I mean, uh, the rent is cheaper, the petrol actually is cheaper, the gas is much cheaper than the U.S. Uh, going out, it's it's depending. There is there's, they have from one star up to seven stars. So whatever your budget, you will find um, you you'll find like income reach to go into this budget. It's depending on on it. That's it. The, the the highest cost for living in Dubai is getting the company up and running and the residency. Everything else is you can you can say in moderate. Yeah, I can compare it to uh, not. The, it's not like California. It's not like New York, but we can say um, like you can say mid mid range state like uh, Arizona, for example. Uh, it's you know it's 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 um, in, in in the mid in the mid size or the or the mid income range compared to the to to the high states like California or, or New York or Florida. Yeah. You can say it like it's it's like Texas, yeah. Okay, I guess the plus side is actually you don't pay any taxes over there in Dubai. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It's uh, once you have the free zone company or the offshore company, uh, you'll not be you not you don't need to pay any tax as as a company owner. And you can keep. There is no income tax. There is no capital gains. There is 99% of the taxes that are available in the US or, or the West generally. They don't count as, as taxes in, in in Dubai. Man, that's that's just amazing, man. Yeah, but <laughs> you keep a lot of your money. You keep yeah. a lot of your money uh, in your pocket. That's that's something that's attractive. Yeah. <clears throat> man, that's 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 just simply amazing. <laughs> So, can you address the mindset shift needed when considering to actually move beyond one's home country? That that's one of the hardest challenges that you need to overcome. 
being in your home country is like be, being in a, your comfort zone. You have you have Amazon, you have DoorDash, you have your uh, Uber. <laughs> this is this is how you lose your uh, you, you lose your mentality because everything in in in, in app it just you go there just a couple of clicks everything is done okay so when you get out of this actually dubai have all the apps they have much more advanced apps than the us because it's the size of the country is small so you can do actually everything from your mobile but mm. taking taking the step itself getting out of your comfort zone leaving your family leaving your friends and going to a place that you've never been before and he decided i would like to settle myself here i would like to live here that's the most hard challenge i've seen people who spend all their lives 40 80 whatever how long how long they live and they didn't take the step because they are afraid i mean you know it's like you just need to adapt your grand grandfather mentality when he moved to the US 200 years ago or 100 years ago whatever it's he have been moved for better opportunities or been forced whatever the reason he have moved to the US you have to take this uh, it's like i can tell it the the adventure mentality i'm going there there's nothing happen to me uh, everything will be fine you just need to have enough cash and start accepting other cultures and mentality because when you lived your real life in the US or Canada or the UK or the EU you have never get in touch with with um, with other cultures or other mindset not you think that in, in because I've, I've been um, I've, I have a many US friends and the one of the things that they don't understand the others mentality 20 years ago when I was visiting Dubai and then I tell my American friends it it was after 9/11 they said are you going to a uh, for a muslim country they will cut your hand for doing i tell them it's not like this i i know i'm muslim so i can i, I don't have this barrier but at least at least the others you need to understand that you are other to someone else like you so it's like everyone is different from the other from from from, from the other side you have to accept people as they are whatever the culture they have whatever the mindset they have and forget about the bs that in your in your mind from the media and the social media 99% of the information available in different countries that targeted to the U to us unfortunately it's not true and when you go on the ground i mean before the i used to travel before the social media or the youtube and I, i've visited many african countries i've visited many you can say unpleasant places and when i go there Uh, I find it totally different in the ground. That's why I I have a very um solid mindset that I can accept anyone from from any other country. So you need to build this step up. You not not be able to build uh, uh, a a very solid from from day one, but at least accepting that there is there is better opportunities in the other side, but it will take time until you will be able to grab the fruits. you not go there in one day or a couple of weeks and you get everything no it will take time it's 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 like a process human beings take time to adapt and then accept and then change and then flourish yeah i also want to point out the one word you actually use adapt if you understand how to actually adapt to a certain situation you will win as a man man yeah definitely yeah it's it's that that have been all, all over the history men was taking actions they were not waiting for someone to do something on their behalf uh, how how men are weak today is because they are waiting for the government to send them a check they waiting <laughs> for yeah it's like it's it's, yeah. it's it's that's nonsense it's like it's like you killing my uh, you can say my nature as a man that I go and find at the beginning it was food and then money and then and then jobs and opportunities and then partners and then wives or whatever it's like if you just sit in a home and just waiting for someone to pay you that's that you start dying from the inside and this has happened during the lockdown many countries just they, they, there's you, you have nothing to do and you're just waiting there someone will it's like if you if you if you see people who are gone through traumas or problems or have been homeless 
the 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 reach stage they are just desperate just waiting for someone to come and, and save us that's actually one of the um, uh, you can say bs that happen in the media no one is coming to save you if you would like to build a global lifestyle or see different opportunities just go and do it get a passport and just travel but have the mindset before traveling yeah so um that's actually good information there um now what would you say how do you explain like the benefits of embracing the new opportunities and exploring a different culture in dubai it's the, the first benefit that will happen to you that you will see there's there's the um, uh, it's us is not the best place in the world it's very good it's not bad it's compared to other countries it have a lot of opportunities but there is more opportunities now especially after in, in 2023 not in the us you have seen many companies or many um entrepreneurs the they start locating from california to texas and florida and now they're leaving texas and florida and they're going to uh, to the ue they're going to singapore they're going to hong kong because the the amount of regulations and amount of burdens and taxes um you can say a nonsense but that the U.S. start to embracing on entrepreneurs and 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 uh, um, you can say different mindsets is out of control. It's not easy doing business anymore. It's not like 20 years ago. So there's other countries are taking these opportunities and they try to be more relaxed. They try to be more friendly. They offer more incentives. They lower the taxes. They allow people to come uh, visa free. They stay more. They, they they are welcoming everyone. So. When, when any place or any country, it's like, this is like the cycle of, um, you can say, going up and going down. That's, that, that's human nature. You're not be able to be number one all the time. U.S. have been number one for almost 30 years now, 40 years. So it's, 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 it's like a cycle, and then it's, it's going down. And when it's going down, there's other countries trying to take the place, and, and that's it. So as a human being... You have to see where the opportunities, where, where where I can benefit myself, where is I can make more wealth, where I can live stress free, where I can eat better food, where I can find better partners, where I can have better dating. That's 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 the idea of just there is there is different there is something better than in in other places. Can you discuss some common hurdles that like such as like cultural adjustments, language barriers, and administrative procedures in Dubai? Uh, I, I can tell you there is no language barrier in, the, uh, in, the, um, in Dubai because the, the, the official language of the country actually is not English, it's Arabic. But every, the country is adopted to have an English language as their main language for everything. The rules, the regulations, the companies, the taxes, the banks, the apps, the, everything. You will not if you speak English, even if you don't have a very good English, you will be able to survive in Dubai. And 99% of people there speak a very good, you can say it's not American English or British English. They, by the way, they favor more into the, the UK because they, they have been uh, occupied before, but they have a more British influence than the US, but they are not huge influence. So they mix between, their English is very easy to understand and you will be able to not find any problems communicating with almost anyone. That's that's the first thing. So there's no language barrier. It's not like going to Indonesia and the rules are different languages or Philippines, they, you have to go through um, a lot of hurdles. Even the the, uh, the court system, the, the everything is in, in, in English. So there's no language barrier. There is a cultural barrier, but as the country is having this mix of expats uh, and they are from different places, they have they have developed something called like international expats. They are not hundred percent Americans. They are not hundred percent British. They are not hundred percent Asian. They mix. It's I, I, I tell this idea if you have visited Istanbul or Hong Kong, if you uh, uh, Istanbul is like it's called like you can it's the the bridge between the east and the west between Europe and and Asia or the Middle East, and they have the, their culture is more into the Eastern culture. Okay. Hong Kong is more into the Asian culture. So if you put Hong Kong and Istanbul into one city, that would be Dubai. 
plus the flavor of London and York. Okay? That's the thing. The second thing about the administration process, it's you, you will need to have a different mindset that the, the, the American mindset of doing businesses is different there. They, they, they don't have the cowboy lifestyle. They have a different lifestyle. So things sometimes take more, especially in summer, when you have a summer and everything is hot and people are, you, you, you will find it more, uh, taking more time because people are adapting to the, 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 the you can say, the different weather they are living in. Um, so if you, that's why I don't advise you to go in the summer. But they have a very straightforward process to make sure that anything you do with the government is done as soon as possible. And they have like an apps for rating how much, even um, I, I'll give you like a funny story. I was I've been there like five years ago. I was renewing my driving license and, and the guy do it in like 20 minutes. And after I finished, he asked me for a survey if I'm happy or not. And then I, I was shocked. Why Why you ask me? So you are a government official, so you have to be lazy and uh, no. And then I, I keep digging about this information and I find that the, the, the head of the government itself, they have, they have insisted that survey um, and it's called, they call them Dubai happiness. So they try to see how much the government uh, administration process is taking, uh, and if there anyone is lacking or lagging or systems are because they. This is how they build the city. They build the city in efficiency. So if they have they have problems, people will not go there. This is the selling point. Mm, yeah, this is the much. this is the Dubai dream. It's like the American dream. There. The, their dream is that we are welcoming anyone from anywhere. You will pay no taxes. You will, we will get you everything from anywhere. If you, if you would like to American apples or um, uh, Philippine bananas or would like to have uh, uh, American steak from, from Texas, we can get it. We have everything from the world. So whatever you taste or flavor, you'll find it. That's how they sell the Dubai dream. Oh, wow. So what's your thoughts on the current dating market between like the Western countries like US, UK, and then you have like the Middle East, which is like Dubai, the UAE? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the, the dating situation in the UAE. It's not comp it's not like the US and it's not like Asia. It's not like Philippines or Thailand. You will have a plenty of oversupply of uh, <laughs> dating opportunities. That's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. I have more experience now. So, <laughs> so the, the oversupply you find in Africa or the, the Asian countries or Latin America, it's not there in Dubai, especially in the local market, because it's very controlled, local, um, small market. You, all, there, all people there are expats from different countries. And the, most of the people are dating are have like a dating, they are, you can say medium class or high class. So the dating average on the upper side, not on the lower side. They require the you can say they are more feminine, but the, the financial requirement is is higher compared to other places. Mm. They don't have the Middle East. I mean, if you if you have someone from the Middle East, he, he could. But he, if she uh, uh, lived or life in, in Dubai, she will have an international uh, mindset. Because I consider Dubai is not it, it's physically or graphically in the Middle East, but the mindset of the of the country and people living there. If you've lived there more than five five years, your your mindset will be totally changed. But if you're just living yourself in in in, in African country or the Asian country and you just move there, you're just coming with your mindset. You still didn't open up to that. But they don't have the they don't have the work culture, by the way. Okay, there's oh, no. Fantastic. <laughs> they, they don't have a work culture. If you are, if you are on the other side, you, you you know what I mean. That you you can't you can't you can't show anything related to this. Any uh, any movies or any information that's available to into this uh, uh, idea is restricted. They are not allowed to do. It. That's that's the first thing. They have a family tradition, okay? Uh, because it's it's based on the Arabic culture or the Islamic culture. The, the man, the wife. Uh, and this, the man is the man, and the wife is the wife. The woman is a woman, and the man is the man. They they don't have mixed up uh, things like in other places. Uh, 
so you still you still have a lot of tradition. You will feel respected as a man, okay? Because it's like the uh, the country itself trying to integrate more women into the government and and but they still women. They you will feel them feminine. They have different dresses. They they very well respected. Uh, everyone respect mm. them as, as a tradition. It's like America in the 1950s, where the the woman is the woman and the man is the man. The man have to go to work, but there's still women who work. The, you still find, um, you can say, some of the toxic culture from the West, but it's not, it's not over. It's not, because it's it's the country still at the end of the day. The it's not um, it's not West cultures. You see people who are, especially the expats who are coming with, if you are expats and you have a toxic culture and go into other place, you're coming with your culture and you don't accept anything, okay? But I know many, many West, uh, West individuals from the UK and US, they've been living in Dubai for 20 or 30 years and we can try to invite some of them to share their experience. After a couple of years, they be accepting the, 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 the different culture and they say that this it's different. It's um, I they start losing their toxic uh, ideas uh, and uh, this new hypes, which is which is which many people don't accept. Mm. Yes, <laughs> that's that's good to hear, man. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. The world is going on in the U.S. right now. Just, yeah, I know. It's like it's really uh, like a clown world over here. <laughs> I just can't imagine myself living here long term. So yeah, Dubai is definitely an option for me. Okay. Probably, probably going to be my number one because I actually plan on going to like Dubai, Philippines, Thailand. Just travel around there. Definitely. Um, yeah. Vietnam, check that out as well. China, I'm not too sure yet. <laughs> I have a plan. You can, you can, you can spend like you can say. Um... Two weeks in each country. If you if you just have like a plan, because if you start, you can start with Dubai or end by Dubai, because if you're coming from the US, it will be on the uh, on the other side. You can go from from, for example, in the US and then going to Philippines and then Thailand and then Indonesia, Vietnam. They are very close to each other. And then from from Asia, you can go to Dubai, and you will you will get. It will be lifetime experience. You will you will you will understand many of things that you have read online, even we discussed today. And you build your own picture because everyone has their own uh, uh, experience. Whatever, whatever, whatever experience I'm sharing or other people I'm sharing, actually, when you go on the ground, you start developing your own um, uh, culture, your own your own personal experience in the country. Mo, if you have if you have any advice for men in their twenties, what would it be? Um, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Uh, I mean, try to go outside. Don't spend all your life in your mobiles and uh, and computers. That's my advice. Try to be. Yeah, try to be a more human being. It's like, uh, actually, the, we are more losing our human touch as humans. We are losing how to interact together. I mean. Um, it's like I, I, I talk to you now as I'm, we are sitting in a cafe and just chatting into uh, having a coffee shop or whatever. It's like, it's like this is the mindset I have. Even when we are interacting into computer, but the, the human interactions, the, the chemicals, the, the, the physical contact with people, eyes to eyes and, and word to word and face to face, that's how we build ourselves as a man. So don't spend your life just looking into glass screens and, and then you will lose yourself as a, as a human being. Mm. So what would you say are some essential, essential items to have when getting ready to travel in like a suitcase or whatnot? Um, there's, there's many things you can, you can, you can need to be ready. The, the most important thing, take, uh, 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 you have a digital copy of your passport and you have a physical copy. You just need to copy, um, the, the, the main page in the passport and the different and put them on paper at the backup. That's 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 the your passport is your gateway back to your country. So try to have um, as much as copy as it. If if even if you're traveling to different locations, that's the first thing. Don't try to as as um, 
try to have easy to wash, easy to uh, to use clothes like t-shirts and jeans and and um, um, you can say um, uh, jackets that fit into different weathers. Could be raining, it could be snowy, it could be uh, hot, it could be so. Try to adapt into this and get the essential. The essential here that you need to have. If you if you having um, U.S. number coming from the U.S., make sure that you have an international package that you can be used. If you if you can have a spare uh, mobile phone that you can put SIM from a different country, um, that that's a thing. Try to bring some cash. Some countries, even if they are 100% cashless, but the using cash don't bring a lot of cash, but just something at the spare cash or the backup cash. You you might need it. And if you have any medicines or creams or gels or anything essential that you use in daily basis, try to have like a, 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 a couple of them with you. You will find it in the others, but understand until you find there and go to pharmacies or supermarkets and try to buy them, they might have different brands and different names and different ingredients. So have, have them if, if it's something essential. If you if you have like a vitamins or something that you do on daily basis, keep... keep um, um, keep uh, extra with you and try to learn and and understand about the country that you you moving into or traveling in as much as you can but don't just watch uh, vlogs and people visiting the country as tourists they spend a couple of days and they say well everything is fine i would like to live here that's not <laughs> true yes that's not true picture of the countries because many people go to country as a visitor and they the the shot a wonderful vlog they spend a couple of days and they and this is not a reference of the country this is like a tourist short version bs version of the country okay to get actually a version of the country you need to spend at least six months continuous not traveling back and forth so you can feel the country you can eat with the locals you can meet the locals you can talk with them you can spend in the country. You can live in different places. And you don't have to, to know any country. You need to live with the locals, not the expats. And the last thing you need to have is to be ready to accepting others. That's the most important thing. So are there any dangers to be aware of when traveling to Dubai? No, no, it's 100% safe. It's it's most, it's it's 99% 0.9% more safe than any other place in the US. That's that's a fact. That's a fact. Because it, it's it's a small country. It's very well controlled. Um, that means there's no crime. There are crime. But it's the crime rate, it, there's, there's, there's no way to compare the crime rate from anywhere in the US or Canada for, for, for Dubai or the UAE. Because it's it's totally different environment. And it's much safer than other places like in Philippines and Thailand. That's why many people I know the, the making the headquarters there because when you live in safe place you you can say you live stress free there's no one coming to mug me there's no um, there, there's no shooting news uh, it's it's the, the, the that's that that's try to change your mind because it's it gets you more relaxed I can enjoy more of life mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like Dubai is the future, man. Yes, <laughs> so it's the future city. Yeah, they have been building it for more than it's. I mean, what what you see today was an idea twenty, thirty years ago. So it's take a lot of time to reach this place. It's not something that happened like this. It's 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 but it's, it's been done by sweat and it's 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 many built by men. That's why you feel mainly there. <laughs> so, what kind of jobs can travel usually get when they want to work in Dubai? If they're not uh, being digital work. Yeah, it's it's the, because the country is very well connected and it's it, and it, they have the international standard. W whatever your they are welcoming more into the expats. If you if you have an experience, for example, in um, uh, in something niche like uh, digitals or you are a programmer or you are a content creation or you are doing something specific, there is they have um, very well you can say diverse. Um, job opportunities. You can apply for the jobs even if you are based in the US. You don't have to travel there. 
if you find a job opportunity and the payment is good, it's, it's not be as good as California or New York. The, the, the salary will be much lower, okay? Especially at the beginning. If you, if you are willing to accept something lower at the beginning, if you are not very well experienced, uh, you can use it as a way to get out of the US uh, without investing or opening a business and you go there as an employee. Uh, some companies give you allowance, like housing allowance, travel allowance, because you know are an expat, so you, you might go to the US to, to visit your family or friends uh, two, two times a year. So they give you more, the, the salary might be low, but you don't pay taxes and you have more allowance and you have more dating opportunities. <laughs> That's definitely fantastic for me. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that 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 that's a thing. But the one th one more thing, the job the the job market is very competitive because you are not competing only with you are competing with the whole world. That's a thing. So, what does the future look like for you and your business? I mean, it's uh, it's growing. We we. We've been growing very fast in the, in the last couple of um, weeks. I've seen more opportunities. People are asking more detailed questions. And the, um, the idea about being a global citizen or a passport bro or, or remote worker or, or digital nomad, it's actually the same. You just go to a different country to enjoy more opportunities. Whatever title you can, you can put. These opportunities could be whatever thing. So the movement is growing not just in, in the passport growth sites, but it's going in different ways. People are fed up from taxes, from uh, toxic cultures, from less dating opportunities, or from um, high cost of living. And they try to see where it can go next. So it's, it's like the success formula for, for, for the reasons to leave your country and go to other places. And it's not just in the US, by the way. This has happened in the US, in many EU country, the UK, UK, many people I, I know left the UK and also the, there's, there's more taxes coming in the US and Australia and New Zealand. So most of the West countries, people are fed up, English speaking countries, they start saying, I don't, fit, I don't see myself fit here anymore. Mm. So are, do you have any extra stories for the viewers and for Dubai? Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> some people think that Dubai is full of camels. Actually, they have camels. That's not because it's, it, it used to be better. Just, just, it, 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 it's, um, so they have, um, I can tell you that, um, it's, it's, it's a funny story, but it, it will give you how things are, are different. In the winter, their winter is the summer. It's, it, in the, um, in the winter, the, we the weather is very good, so it's like a summer in New York, okay? But in this, the summer is like hell, because it could be go up to 45%, uh, 40, 45 it's, uh, degrees, which is like uh, uh, something like uh, 100 Fahrenheit, something like, I don't know the, 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 the conversion rate, but it, it, it will be exactly like putting your head in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's one thing, one thing, one thing. As it's very hot in the summer, everywhere you go is it's it's very high advanced ACs. You'll not feel the summer if you're spending the summer in Florida. It's not like Florida because almost even even traveling between even taking the metro, the once you get into uh, moving into the metro itself, they have a subway. This subway is have AC. Uh, going to some some buildings have interconnected together. They have AC in the in the the parking slots. The uh, the, the the underground parking. They have AC, uh, and they don't have the AC like the ACs in the US. The AC is very. It's it's one of the most advanced ACs in the world. You will feel really cold in the, if you are spending in a condo or your flat or whatever. If you turn it like twenty one or something, you need to have. Um, you need to have divot or cover because it's it's getting actually freezer cold. So that's 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 the thing. But if you went the first time in the summer, once you get out of the airport, you feel like someone put Evan in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Man, camels! I don't think I actually ever seen a camel like in person before. So that's going to be yeah, a, it's it's nice a whole experience. New experience. <laughs> It's it's interesting animals, by the way. 
<laughs> so do you have any last words for the viewers out there in the world? Uh, stay global. Always stay global, my friends. That's my always my last word. <laughs> Um, so how, how can people find more about you? Yeah, it just, um, if you can type Passport Bros Official, you'll find our um, group in, in Facebook, or you can type my name, Mohammed Abu Shanab, or you can type Mo Global Citizen. That's where you can find, you can find my website. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, we are on different platforms. I'm everywhere. And there you have it, guys. Make sure you look after yourselves from around the world, and I'll see you guys on the next live stream. Have a good one.